Chronic pain conditions include conditions such as fibromyalgia, which is a generalized pain uh, situation, uh, neuropathic pain associated with diabetic neuropathies where there's actual damage to the nerves, postherpetic uh, neuralgia, which is caused by the herpes virus, zouster, uh, doing damage to the nerve sheaths, uh, radiculopathies, which can be occurred as a result of disc damage in the neck uh, impinging on the nerves that are there. You can have chronic daily headaches, you can have migraines, which fall in the chronic pain category, low back pain, and osteoarthritis. And again, here's the conundrum that we run into. Osteoarthritis, what percentage of patients who have osteoarthritis actually have chronic ongoing pain? The answer is 20%. Now, if you listen to the ads on TV, you would come to believe that virtually 100% of people who have osteoarthritis have pain. And in fact, quite the opposite. 80% of people who have osteoarthritis do not have any pain. And 20% of people who have osteoarthritis have pain on a regular basis. So what's going on? What's different about those people than is going on with all the rest of the people who have osteoarthritis that we've discovered by x-raying and for some other reason we say, oh, you get a lot of osteoarthritis on there, but you don't have any symptoms from it. Why is that? And it's true in the majority of the patients, not the minority. We also have a situation with irritable bowel syndrome, which probably also falls in the chronic pain category. This is a recurrent intermittent pain in this particular case, but as we'll see as we go through this process, that the mechanisms, the neurophysiologic mechanisms, are similar in both situations. So let's look at does chronic pain and depression co-occur together? So let's look at the epidemiology of this first. And certainly, uh, the evidence is there for that. So if we just look at the occurrence of major depressive disorder in the population, we see that about 6.6 percent of the population has problems with major depressive disorders uh, every year. That amounts to 21 million people. That's a lot of people. And the lifetime prevalence of uh, depression is about 16 percent. And so we're talking about 51 million people at one point in their lives suffering with a true diagnosis of major depressive disorder. And the ratio of, of females to males is about two to one. So it's much more prevalent in women than it is in men. If we look at chronic pain, chronic pain, and the numbers vary so widely because the definitions in the studies vary so widely, but range somewhere between 9 to 45 percent of Americans at any given time. Average prevalence comes out to about 15 percent. As you look over all the studies, we're talking 47 million individuals suffering with chronic pain in this country at any given time. So both these diseases affect a great deal of people and have a huge impact on the population. Now, if we look at pain in primary care, okay, one particular study looking at about 12,000 individuals, uh, they found that, sure enough, about 7% of their population had major depressive disorder, which is consistent with the national statistics, and about 45% of their patients suffered with chronic pain. They then looked at individuals without major depressive disorders who suffered with chronic disabling pain, okay? And the answer was 10%. So the occurrence of chronic disabling pain and the occurrence of major depressive disorders is 90% in this particular study. If we looked at patients suffering with non-disabling chronic pain, that is, they're still able to work, they're still able to participate in most of their activities of daily living, 35% suffered from non-disabling chronic pain and also didn't have a major depressive disorder. We're going to turn this around in a minute. But so individuals with major depressive disorders, 41% suffered with chronic disabling pain. It's a huge co-occurrence of the disease. 25% suffered from non-disabling pain, which gives us 66% of individuals with major depressive disorders are also suffering with chronic pain disorders. Flip it around, we look at comorbid pain and, and depression and some other studies, the answer is 52% of individuals with major depressive disorder also suffer from chronic pain, a little better than half. 65% of individuals with chronic pain also suffer from major depressive disorder. Okay, so both ways. So what do we know about the occurrence of chronic pain and major depressive disorder? It's common. In fact, it's more common than not. All right. We also know that the cost of treatment of these individuals suffering with both these conditions is dramatically higher than the cost of treating people suffering solely with chronic pain or people suffering solely with depression. The answer is about 25 to 50 percent higher. This is a multi, multi-billion dollar problem. It's huge.
and it has a massive impact on our society. We also know that the disability is greater in those who suffer with both chronic pain and depression. We know that the likelihood of recovery is less. How much less? In one study, if you had either major depressive disorder or chronic pain alone, you had about a 47% recovery rate. If you had both together, 9% recovery rate. This is an unmitigated disaster. These people aren't getting better from conventional therapies. There's increased morbidity and mortality associated with both these diseases. Higher prevalence of suicide, higher prevalence of disability, uh, higher prevalence of divorce, higher prevalence of ruined lives as a result of both these diseases co-occurring in individuals. This is a great big problem. Now, let's step back for a second and review for a sec. So what we've got is about 65% of the population has got both chronic pain and major depressive disorder. On the outliers, we've got a group of people who have chronic pain, and we have a group of people who have major depressive disorders. Those people are much easier to treat than the people who have both. The suggestion that I would make to you is that the people in the middle have something of a different disease than the people on the other ends and that there may be a different neurophysiologic process going on in these individuals. So pain is a major predictor of depression and anxiety, and depression seems to be an important predictor of work disability of patients with chronic pain. These diseases interact with each other. These diseases make each other worse. And so something is going on and it has to be going on a neurophysiologic level. Now, one of the things that we know about pain and depression is that there's a significant overlap in terms of the neurotransmitters that are involved. And indeed, as we look at the neurotransmitters, what we find is an inflammatory process going on in the central nervous system in both these conditions, the end result being a reduction in the, in the production of uh, specific neurotransmitters such as serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, and glutamate, not listed here, but glutamate being the most common uh, neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. So all of these things are affected in both of these diseases. So we see common neurotransmitters being uh, impacted uh, in both these diseases. And the focus to date has been on looking, how do we modify these neurotransmitters? What do we do? We give antidepressant medications. Uh, we may give some anti-seizure medications. But basically, how do we change neurotransmitters? I would suggest that while that's good, what's behind this? What's, what's the basis of this? And this is what we're trying to get to. 